Hey everyone, I came back from my holidays to discover that there's an exciting question during the rounds about who will survive in their job longer, Joe Biden, Rishi Sunak or Gareth Southgate. And certainly in case of the latter two, a lot of people are wondering whether the England team will even be able to vote in the UK election or use a ballot paper, seeing as they seem very unable to find the box, and when they do they struggle to put a cross into it. But anyway, just like the football, Thursday night saw the repeat of something else that happens every four years seemingly, a debate between Donald Trump and somebody, in this case Joe Biden. This is the third such time Donald Trump has been in a presidential debate, but just like the TV show Westworld, the first season was probably the best. That was the one where he told Hillary that she's lucky not to be in jail. Anyway, this year it was switched around and Joe Biden talked about how Trump was a convicted felon before losing his train of thought, pausing and then appearing to glitch up worse than that Horizon computer system the post office bought. Personally, my favourite part of the debate would probably be either one, when the two of them went on a bizarre rant about which of them had the better golf handicap, or two, when it cut to the CNN studio and it was like watching Awake as they all realised the true horror of what had just unfolded before them. It reminded me of that scene in The Simpsons where Homer designs a terrible car and his brother realises he's now bankrupt. But anyway, even for those who'd been very aware of Joe Biden's failing faculties, the performance is fairly shocking. There is no doubt that he should be bowing out gracefully at this stage. The New York Times and numerous major donors have called for such. But Biden and his handlers have said he's staying on and he's going to keep campaigning and he's going to go visit South Carolina. He's also going to be visiting a few other states like Confused State or Semi-Conscious State, albeit jacked up in a cocktail of pick-me-ups. And yet at this point, with literally hundreds of millions of ballot papers only a month or two from going to press, it's actually fairly difficult from a practical perspective to replace Joe Biden as a Democrats candidate, at least without making the new presidential candidate Kamala Harris, who's probably about the only person other than Hillary Clinton who'd be guaranteed to lose worse to Trump in November. The only real option in the table other than that is using the party's behind-the-scenes apparatus to skip the convention, disregard the primary voters and put in someone like California Governor Newsom, or one of a number of other suggested upgrades, if you want to call it that, all of whom are white men in their 50s and a lot of time when most of the party activists are claiming that promoting anyone to a seniority other than a woman of colour is fascism. So who would I put in charge if I was them? Well, you know what? There is one candidate out there and he has been president before and he only served one term so he could run again. That'd be Jimmy Carter. Strangely, he's probably still a bit more popular and certainly less divisive than Trump or Biden. He might actually win. But on the other hand, he's also 99 years old and might want to stick on a safe pair of hands on the ballot paper as the vice presidential candidate just in case. Is that a silly suggestion? Yes, it is. Is it any worse than what we just watched? Probably not. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.